Hello and welcome to the Scientific Adventures of Beardman. Today we're going to be looking at a concept builder from physicsclassroom.com. Um, it's in the category of static electricity and it's called charge and charging. It's often the first one done as you head into the unit on static electricity. So our, our main concept here is electric charge. Um, electric charge comes from in, uh, two different kinds of particles inside of the atom. OK, um, if you took chemistry last year, which is likely, at least if you're at the school I teach at, uh, you learned that electron or atoms have in the nucleus here, um, they have uh, protons and neutrons. Neutrons don't have any charge. And since today is all about electric charge, we don't care about them. Um, but protons have a charge here in the center. And then the electrons, which are whizzing around the outside here, they aren't really going in orbits like this uh, when you learn a little bit more about Heisenberg and certainty principle, uh, you'll understand that better, the probability ratios and, the, and all that. But you probably learned some of that in chemistry. But what we need to do today is just remind ourselves where protons are and what charge they have, where electrons are and where they have are. You'll notice I'm talking about protons first, but electrons are more important, so I put them at the top. All right. So protons, which are red in this particular picture, uh, are in the nucleus, OK? And in every picture you'll see, the nucleus will look kind of this big and the atom's this big. In reality, if the atom was this big, the nucleus would be so small you wouldn't even be able to represent it with a dot. OK, it's really small, squeezed in, compact in the center. The nuclear strong force is holding those uh, together. And so the biggest thing that you need to know about protons besides their charge, which I'll get to in a second, is that they are stuck. They are not going anywhere. If you ever tell me that a, a proton is moving from one atom to another, I will recognize that there is a nuclear reaction going on and you're about to blow up the school or the town that you live in. So please do not try and move protons. Uh, that will end a catastrophe. Um, protons, big thing here is they have a positive charge. Okay, so protons have a positive charge, but they're stuck in place. So if you have a piece of metal or a comb or a piece of plastic, every proton in that object is gonna remain exactly where it is. If it's a liquid, it can flow around, but we aren't going to deal with liquids today. Okay, on the other hand, the electrons are out here in what's called the electron cloud. So we'll say electron cloud. Electron cloud. And they are not stuck. Okay, they can move around. Not stuck. OK, and the electrons have a, a negative charge, a negative charge. OK, so when we have our piece of metal or our uh, plastic bottle, the electrons on the outside uh, may or may not be able to move around. Depends on how much energy they have, what types of atoms they're in. But the only thing that could possibly move is an electron. The protons are stuck where they are. All right, let's get into today's activity. So first thing you have to do in the first uh, level, it's called particle count. Instead of having apprentice master wizard like usual, the first one's called particle count. So basically it's asking you, it, this thing here, it'll tell you it's either positive, neutral, or negative. And then you'll have to determine, does that mean that there are the same number of protons and electrons, more protons than electrons, or more electrons than protons. Well, this is pretty straightforward. If it is positive, then there have to be more of the positive thing. OK, so a positive thing will have more positives. A negative thing will have more negatives, and a neutral thing will mean that every single proton has an electron to cancel it out. OK, and that's what neutral be. All six of the questions like this basically have that idea. If it's positive, that means there are more positive things. If it's negative, there's more negative things. And if it's neutral, then they're equal. 
All right, the second level called getting into the flow talks about how they become that way. How do we get something that has more positives than negatives or more negatives than positives? So let's start out by just drawing uh, a material here. Keep in mind, um, I'm just drawing each proton with an electron next to it. Um, but in reality, if you're dealing with something like iron, like in a paper clip, you would have 26 uh, protons uh, in a nucleus with 26 electrons around the outside. In a paper clip, you'd have somewhere around a septillion uh, uh, protons, probably 10 septillion uh, protons and 10 septillion uh, electrons. So we've just got five here. Okay, so this is the neutral substance because you have the same number of protons and electrons. So if this wants to get to be negative, well, that's that's probably the most straightforward one. Then we just have negative things flow into here. And once there's some extra negative things in there, well, now there's more negative. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight negative things, and only one, two, three, four, five positive things. That's what we meant on the last slide. When there's more negatives, it's negative. When there's more electrons, it's negative. So how do we take something from neutral to negative? It means we take electrons and we add them to the substance. So we see that over here, electrons were added to the object. Okay, so you might be, if you're not super familiar with this right now, you might be thinking, hey, if I want to make this thing positive, that means I just add protons. But if that's what you're thinking, you forgot what we just learned a couple slides ago, and that is that the protons are stuck in the nucleus. Remember, if you're telling me you're moving a proton around, it means you're causing a nuclear reaction, destroying your entire city. Okay, so let's not do that. So instead of having protons come in, how else could we make this thing positive? Well, if we have five protons and we can't add any more, then if it's going to become positive, we're going to need less than five electrons. Keep in mind, we'd really be talking in, in hexillions or quadrillions of electrons moving around. Um, but uh, for right now, we're just going to talk about five because it's a little bit easier to picture. So instead of having the elect protons come in, because there can't be, and we have five protons and we need less than five electrons, that means we're going to need electrons to leave. Okay, and so if those electrons leave, that electron leaves, this electron leaves, well now we've got five protons, one, two, three, four, five, and only three negative charges, three electrons. And so five protons, three electrons, this is now positively charged. How did we get that way? Electrons flowed out of the object or were removed from the object. So we see that right here, electrons removed from the object. If you didn't notice, we just said that protons are always stuck in the center and we're never gonna dare move them. So if you ever choose protons were added to the object, here, let's just actually permanently cross that out. Okay, that didn't exactly cross out. Try again, try, try again. Okay, and protons were removed from the object. That's equally impossible because protons cannot be moved around in solid objects. But electrons can flow, and so we have the other two options. So th those are the two ways in which you would take a neutral object and make it either positive or negative. The next question is, if we were given a positive object. Like say here, we're just given this object. It's got less electrons than protons. And we want to know how to make it neutral. Well, once again, we cannot, cannot take the protons and remove them. They are stuck, stuck in the nucleus. So if we need to make this neutral and this is a positive thing, that means we're going to need to get some electrons and get an electron in here. Of course, I'm lagging in the middle of trying to make a video. Okay, uh, and so that will be negative there. And we'll need one more to come in here and come down here. Yes, I tried to do that. But um, you get the idea. So the electrons have to come in. So if it's, if it's a positive thing and we need to make it neutral, that means we need more electrons to cancel out those protons that were there all by themselves without a partner.
Okay. And so we would choose uh, if we're trying to go from neutral to positive, that means that we'd have to add electrons to the object. All right. And finally, um, we got one last idea that could come up, and that is that we could have an object go from negative. So let me get some negatives here. I'm not going to draw too many since it's, it's lagging on me here. So we got a couple extra electrons there, seven electrons and five protons. This is a negatively charged thing. If that uh, it needs to be made neutral, then that means that these electrons are going to need to flow. If I can not lag here, get that flow out of the object okay so the electrons need to be able to flow out of the object in a later concept builder we'll see how or why that may or may not happen okay but those are going to flow away out of the object and so we'd say in order to do that that would mean that electrons would have to be removed from the object so the biggest thing is just remember that electrons are the only thing that can move and if you know electrons are negative you can figure out which way they're going to have to go all right and so the final level is called analyze that if this will ever load for me maybe it double loaded there we go. Analyze this, excuse me. So analyze this just combines the two things you've already learned how to do. If you read carefully, it'll tell you that uh, of the two objects, one object was positive and the other object was negative. You can see the before right here. Okay. And so you just mark which one. If it's positive, it's got more positive things. If it's negative, it's got more negative things. And if it's neutral, they're equal. And then you read it carefully and see what's going to happen and what it's going to be afterwards. And then you uh, do uh, these over here. And um, again, if it's become neutral, you mark the, the positive and negative are equal and so forth. And then you think about which direction they flowed. What was the balloon like before uh, the um, before whatever was done to it was done to it, and what the balloon was like afterwards, and then you figure out did were the electrons added to it in order to make that happen, or were the electrons removed from it, just like you did in the last section? Remember, of course, once again that the protons are stuck in the nucleus, so please never move a proton. We'll end with this thought. Please do not create a nuclear explosion that destroys your city. Only move the electrons. Thanks for joining us here on the Scientific Adventures of Beard Man. We'll see you next time.